Good morning, everyone! So, I've been attending a lot of events lately and have had a lot of opportunities to meet you guys. And during these events, a lot of times there are Q&As. And in every single Q&A, there's always the question, how do I start a YouTube channel? What's my advice for people who want to start a YouTube channel? How to make YouTube your career or job? So in this video, which is sponsored by Chromebook, that's right. I nailed a sponsor with Chromebook. I'm going to be giving you guys my personal advice slash takes on how to start a YouTube channel or become a social media influencer. And a lot of this I also feel is going to apply to starting your own business in general. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now speaking of getting started, I find that this is the biggest hurdle and the first hurdle you're going to encounter when it comes to creating a YouTube channel. People are nervous about starting it or they have a certain vision in their mind that they want to carry out. I know this was my personal issue was that I was overthinking it. I was trying to figure out what style I wanted, what theme I wanted, what I wanted my videos to look like, what type of editing I was going to do. My first piece of advice when it comes to starting a YouTube channel is just start it. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect because to be completely honest, it's never going to be perfect. I'm still working on my style and what I like to do in my videos. They're constantly changing and that's kind of the fun thing that goes along with starting something of your own is it kind of evolves over time. Initially, when I started my YouTube channel, the beauty breakdown comes from the idea of, you know, in sports or like football games, they have plays on screen and then the announcers will like mark it up and show you guys how the plays are working and where the players are supposed to run. Yeah, I was gonna do makeup tutorials and beauty tutorials in that type of format and hence the beauty breakdown. And clearly that never came to fruition, which is probably a good thing. So to sum all that up, having an idea is perfectly fine, but worrying about the small details is just gonna stress you out and discourage you from even starting. So it's just important to have an idea and go with it. Now my point number two is going to be covering kind of two separate ideas, but in my head they kind of intermingle, and that is productivity and creativity. Now obviously when you start a YouTube channel, you want to begin with something that you know you're gonna be interested in. Trust me, you are gonna be spending so much time researching and looking into whatever topic you want your YouTube channel to be. So be sure that it is something that you genuinely enjoy because you're gonna be spending a lot of time with that topic. This is kind of like my hack, I guess, when it comes to starting a YouTube channel, is that since I had picked a topic that I knew I was gonna be interested in, it doesn't feel like I'm working. Since I got my Chromebook, I basically had that guy next to me at all times because I like being able to go with the flow and allow my ideas to kind of move through the process of creating them. Now kind of going into another way I am able to stay productive or keep my workflow going is that I like to change up the environment that I'm working in. Sometimes I fall into the trap of sitting in my office, kind of seeing the same four walls. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just take my Chromebook and walk down to a coffee shop near my house or I'll go to a park <laughs> or I'll go anywhere where I kind of am able to get outside of my office. And it's cool because I can use it like a tablet, I can use it like a laptop, I can use it like a workstation, I can use it any way that kind of fits wherever I'm choosing to work for that particular day. And the Chromebook is nice because essentially I feel like I'm carrying around a magazine. It's so tiny and lightweight and I have all the tools I'll need in one little compact device. Now obviously I'm utilizing a lot of apps when I'm using my Chromebook like Word, Skype, Dropbox, all that kind of good stuff. But I find the most common way that I like to use my Chromebook is that when I'm online doing research for my videos, I can capture the screen that I'm looking at and make my own personal notes on it with a stylus. And I feel like I'm able to really hone in on what I wanna talk about in that particular video. So yeah, so it's like I'm able to be productive through the research I'm doing, but also creative through coming up with my own ideas surrounding the research and video. piece of advice I have when it comes to being productive and this is gonna sound a little counterintuitive but you need to create boundaries for yourself when you're doing something on your own it's very easy to work 24 7 but I think it's very important to create times and kind of pencil in areas where you know you can relax and you can turn it off. So I work no more from eight to 10 hours a day on my YouTube channel and I also make sure to take my weekends off and take vacations and play video games. I see this conundrum a lot of times and that people will start YouTube channels and that 
they'll burn themselves out because they spend so much time on it. Now while it's important to obviously delegate time to your YouTube channel and invest your energy and effort into it, it's also important to make sure that you're spending time for yourself because you don't want to kind of get into that point where you're resenting your work and it becomes a daunting task for you. You want to kind of find that balance so you still enjoy it and you still are wanting to do it instead of feeling like you have to do it. I wanted to share some ways on how I find that work-life balance. So one of the ways I do that is to be organized. And one of my favorite ways to be organized is at the beginning of the day, I'll make a list of what I want to accomplish as far as work goes and kind of personal goals for the day. So I color coordinate it. I use this app called Clearlist and it just makes everything simple and clean so I know exactly what I need to do. Another thing that I like to do is I kind of like to plan ahead for things I know I'm going to be doing. There's this cool app I discovered, it's called Buffer, and I love using this because I'm able to time any of my social media activations or social media posts I want to do beforehand. I can kind of set it and forget it, and this way I don't have to be on my social media accounts all day, every day. I can take breaks, which is good for my mind, and I can get back to living my life and not having to constantly be on Instagram or Twitter or any of those things. Another thing I like to do, and this is kind of working, but I'm still enjoying my time, is I do this thing, I call it processing. So when what? I get packages in the mail from orders I've placed for videos, I'll turn on Hulu and I'll watch and catch up on some of my favorite shows. And what's cool is I'll do it on my Chromebook, so as you can see, if there's a product I'm unpacking that I'm like, what the heck is this, or why did I order this, or kind of do some research on it, I can look it up really quickly on one device. And then, as I kind of mentioned earlier, I like to make notes directly on the Chromebook so I can remember it later. So this has a cool stylus, I can capture the screen, and then you can see that I'm kind of underlying points I'll most likely want to talk about when I'm featuring this product or things I'll want to remember. So it's just really helpful that I can keep it all in one place. But I'm still kind of enjoying the whole process because I'm watching my shows, messing with beauty, but still being productive and you know, enjoying my time. So another thing I like to do when I am taking a break from work or on my free time is doodle or draw, color, calligraphy, anything along those lines I've been really into. So besides playing games, which are obviously great for relieving stress, this has been something I've been enjoying and I recently discovered this app called Sketch. So it's kind of been something I've been obsessed with and it's what I use to create the sign in the background of this video, <laughs> in case you're wondering. And yeah, it's just something else I like to do to kind of balance out my work day and my free time. Now that I've kind of shared with you guys how I kind of integrate everything and make it easier for myself as far as productivity and creativity and workflow, I'm gonna kind of address some of the most common issues or concerns that I hear when people talk about wanting to start their own YouTube channel but they're feeling held back. Now I hear this all the time and people are always concerned that they don't have any film experience or know how to edit videos or film videos and my response to them is, have you seen my videos? <laughs> And back when I was in university, and I know this is changing because I've heard they're coming out with college courses that are essentially teaching you how to do YouTube and social media, but I did not take any classes on how to do YouTube or Instagram or any of these things. When it comes to editing and lighting and audio and all that kind of stuff, I had to teach myself how to do it. And that is also the beauty of the day and age we live in is that everything is accessible to you now. With YouTube and Google and the internet and all these kinds of resources, it's something that you can find out how to do. Self-teaching is kind of the best way to navigate this whole space because it's a constantly changing landscape. Another concern I always hear people talking about is that they're shy or they're afraid to be on camera. Hey, I get that. I totally was uncomfortable when I first started filming my YouTube channel. <laughs> Don't go watch my old videos. <laughs> but even people who are the most comfortable speaking in front of people or don't get stage fright whatsoever, it still takes practice and time to warm up to the camera. It's like anything, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Now I can't talk about starting a YouTube channel without addressing the topic of haters. Can I be honest? <laughs> you are always gonna have haters. There's always gonna be someone out there who doesn't like what you're doing. And I kind of always go with the saying of, that is why there are 31 flavors at Baskin Robbins. You could be a delicious chocolate and someone doesn't like chocolate. Don't allow other people's opinions and personal preferences dictate what you decide to do. Now when it comes to the topic of how to deal with haters or hate comments, I think you're gonna hear a hundred different ways people deal with it because everyone deals with it differently. For me personally, I just don't even acknowledge it. I just move along with my life and I don't even really read 
hate comments. I don't engage in that type of conversation or lifestyle, and that's just a personal choice of mine. You just gotta keep doing you, boo. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below where you can check out more information on the Chromebook or pick one up for yourself. Let me know if you guys have any more questions about starting a YouTube channel or you wanna hear my personal takes and advice on the topic. I've been meaning to do this video for such a long time because again, this is a question I get asked all the time and it's something that I genuinely enjoy doing so I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you wanted to start a YouTube channel or you wanted to make your passion your work, I wanted to inspire you guys and push you guys to do what you wanna do. As always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.